Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Meeting. Uh, today we are the 15th of November 2022. Around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportel, Hervé Lemeur, Mark White, Stéphane Merle, um, we have Kevin Martins, Um, Kevin, is there one or two E on your name? I'm not sure. Uh, just the one, like that. Yep. Cool. And we have Bruno Rarten. Okay, six, uh, six bullets. Let's get started with announcements. So today's weekly. Uh, is currently being finished. I saw the, I, I started the build, the trust, the container build, but I saw in Jenkins IO the packages and the wow were available already. So I assume we just have a few uh, release items to be checked. Uh, I didn't see any issue on that weekly, as I would say as usual, but yep. Um, almost there, package war and docker image. Okay, last changelog item, so uh, really release item to be checked later. Uh, reminder that CI Jenkins IO is still offline. There is a security advisory currently being processed, plugin only. Uh, security advisory still being processed. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen any issue on the infra as far as I can tell, but we might have some. Uh, it's just they didn't have time to share with us, so I don't know. Did you heard from the security team? No. Nope. So I assume everything is going is going so far so good. So next weekly, next week, right? So that should be the 22 to of November. Next LTS is 13 of November, if I'm correct. You are correct. Uh, next security release noun. Next major event, I assume it's the first dem. Just a reminder that there is a CI CD room, and if you want to speak about Jenkins or CI CD or whatever you want, please submit your subject. I assume that some of us will be able to meet physically there, so do not hesitate if you have questions or if you want to meet the awesome infrastructure team and related, please come in Brussels first week of February. I, I do plan to come. Do you have other announcement notes before we get started? No? Okay, so let, let's go. Uh, so, thanks, survey for review Azure resource periodically. So, can I let you explain the why I ask you to mention that on today's meeting, Hervé? So, um... I was uh, looking at uh, the different resource group in the Azure portal, and I've noticed, uh, for example, the Prod Confluence one with two databases we are not using anymore, as we don't uh, host Confluence. Uh, I'd like to do a session periodically where we collectively uh, review the resource group and what's in there. In them. I don't know which period we should one every trimester or quarter, I don't know. Uh, that's a good point. So the goal is to be sure that if we have items that are not used, that we don't pay cloud resource for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and if these elements need to be archived, that they are archived, such as the Confluence database, for instance that's worth uh, creating a database dump that we encrypt with a password stored in one password or I don't know the procedure that's a part absolutely unknown for, for me. The, 
do we have a, lo a secure location where we can put backup and archives? I don't think we have such item. Because I mean, we'll if we want to secure things, we need a location that is not easy to reach. And even if it's reached, then just and a few persons. Sorry? Object storage, like uh, S3 like. I don't yes. Know. But that's the easiest part because I mean, FTP, object storage, whatever. But you need to put there a strict access control to ensure that no one is able to access here unless just a few people. And how do you manage once someone has access? How do you manage that these people won't have access if the project say, okay, they don't contribute anymore or if the people are leaving projects? That's the hardest part. And that will be the same for the backups. Because if the backups is easy to reach, then someone won't have to search or to attack the platform. They just have to search for the backup and get the data from there. I mean, that will be clearly easier to break one location than trying to break all the locations. So that will, I assume that's why we don't have a centralized process. I think it's worth asking the board if we don't have an archive thing, a secured one and a public one, I'm not sure. So the board did just have a discussion in yesterday's board meeting about archiving and the, the discussion there was, hey, let's it was around this meeting meeting notes archive the question the point was hey the notes for the governance meeting are too long right now it's slow to load we need a more authoritative place and preferably a place that's stored for those notes because they're public in github so the topic is there it wasn't a discussion of anything private uh, you know of anything sensitive of a sensitive nature so that would need further discussion but the topic has at least been been already brought to the board for brief discussion yesterday. The archiving sensitive data. Because um, I would, uh, I will quote uh, some security people that say better not having a backup than having a backup with sensitive data open to everyone. Right, right, absolutely. Um, so about the reviewing, there are still things that can be deleted or archived. Um, that's a good idea, Hervé. I propose that we start monthly. Could I let you start uh, and add uh, two meetings, two team meetings, uh, one for November and one for December? So we can spend one hour at least, uh, Stefan, Hervé and I, checking uh, what you discovered that could be deleted. Looks good for... Is it okay for you, Hervé? Yes. That's, the month is absolutely arbitrary. If we see that we need to do it more frequently, we will. Um, otherwise, we can keep it one a month. Any question? Let's start monthly. Proposal, let's start monthly at Hervé to create the two first meetings in the calendar. Okay. So unless someone has a question, I'm moving to the closed items. So what task did we finish completely since last meeting? <laughs> um, we have one more, sorry, Hervé. I closed an issue right after you export it. So uh, I will take care of updating the notes. So the, uh, that was an issue. I'm taking in them on the order on, the, on GitHub on the right. So where are the old project meeting logs and minutes? Uh, that one was opened by Daniel. It seems that since some quite some times now, the web service meetings, the Jenkins-CI.org was unavailable. It was a web server that used to be hosted on a virtual machine named Edamame, uh, a simple Apache web server where a set of notes from governance meeting uh, in the past, these notes were extracted from IRC and from whatever system by a, a tool named Robo Butler. 
And that tool was a kind of bot that was able to publish these notes. Uh, this was the case until 2019 when the governance meeting notes uh, shifted to a Google Docs, so reference to what Mark said earlier. Uh, but these uh, meeting notes were published publicly and we had links referencing uh, these notes from Jenkins.io. Um, so we diagnosed that the service was down since month. I don't honestly don't know if I disabled it, if it was Olivier, if it, if it predates Olivier, I'm not sure. We had some leftovers of the service configuration on Puppet that need to be cleaned up even today, but it was absolutely empty on the machine. So we had to retrieve uh, using Wayback Archive Machines and Daniel Archives. We had to retrieve all the notes. Sounds like it's okay. So following Daniel's proposal, we created a repository um, since it's public knowledge and that repository is named Governance Meeting under Jenkins Infra. And the, it has a docs directory. Everything inside that docs repository are served by a GitHub Pages web server. And we have added a C name from meetings Jenkins CI that used to point to the virtual machine. Now it points to the GitHub page instance. Result is that uh, with the help of RV, uh, we were able to prove that uh, we now have all the links. Okay, there were some missing that have been fixed in the past hours. So all the link to meeting Jenkins IO should be now okay. And even the one pointing to the root, we have regenerated Apache listing pages uh, on GitHub page with a tool name AP index. So we should be okay. If there is any missing page from a link or something you know, uh, please open an issue. And of course, if you see word pages in the content that we imported, we might have forgotten some elements added by Wayback Machine for sure. So if you see anything there, please open an issue or propose a pull request fixing the issue. The content of that repository should only move to be fixed. There should be no new content there unless Mark, the governance meeting, the governance board decides to also archive some documents. They can put the documents directly there. The goal is to have this uh, stored in the future. Yeah, I, th I think that at least Gavin's recommendation for governance was consider following the same pattern that the UX SIG uses of creating a repository for the for the, the governance board and it, it would include notes for governance and other other things related to governance. So single repository each. Uh, any objections from the infra team for that technique if we were to add a new repository to Jenkins CI for governance? No, that's okay. Okay, great. Thank Makes you. sense. Any question? So thanks for the help then. Uh, not just missing on agents. So by uh, moving from, uh, so uh, the front like project, everything uh, building front web uh, need not just and eventually a Ruby for building websites on Jenkins uh, infrastructure, plugins, websites, stories, the Jenkins IU website and many more. And after a change on the agent templates, trying to switch to our all-in-one image, like Stefan did with for the Java builds a few a few weeks ago, when I tried to do the same for the Node Ruby image, I did the first step on one of the latest image, uh, and there were issues with the Node because that new image features a SDF, which is a kind of universal package manager that supports multiple versions of each tool can have different Node.js or Terraform or Ruby or whatever. Uh, the setup of this agent uh, wasn't, wasn't correctly fixed on CI Jenkins IO and we had to fix some elements. Uh, the main word things, uh, just in case, at least for Kubernetes plugin on Jenkins, when you specify um, dollar such as dollar $home, uh, the path is not able to interpolate, which makes sense because you don't want Groovy or Jenkins interpolates the variable, you only want shell. However, um, the plugin literally writes $home 
in the past value, which is never interpolated. So that one doesn't work. And the weird thing is that the POSIX command, the command dash V, always work with the bash tilde notation, while the wish which command doesn't know how to deal with the tilde notation, which is not POSIX. So POSIX is better at, at reading non-POSIX things than non-POSIX. That's absolutely mind-blowing. So if you want both command and which to work, to locate a binary in one of the directory, you must use absolute path or have a way to, to update your path dynamically, which is not something you can do with a Jenkins agent or a Jenkins pipeline. You cannot rely on that because it's non-interactive and by default it SH not bash. And it can be through SSH or not. So there are too many HKs, so don't try it and specify absolute path using path. That one was tricky, but the build is successful. So that's one step forward before generalizing our new images with ASDF. Thanks, Alex, for pointing that out and Hervé for the help. Stefan, a word about the LTS update from yesterday. Surprise LTS uh, delivery. <laughs> Um, no, everything works fine, and we 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 did uh, the upgrade. We had to restart twice for for the CI to handle correctly the the startup, but with no real uh, uh, causes. We didn't really uh, understood, but we we did uh, update it, uh, CI trusted and chat. Yes. Thanks a lot for taking care of that. Uh, we had an issue with Maven 11 agents not spawning on CI Jenkins IO that happened last Thursday. So um, it appears that we we have set up limits on the Kubernetes plugin saying for the digital ocean cloud, no more than 30 pods at the same time and 120 on Amazon. Oh, um, yeah. Summary don't trust maximum instance from any agent plugin on Jenkins. They cannot be reliably used because you are in a multi-threaded environment and most of the plugin sucks at updating that shared counter between the multiple threads. So if suddenly you have a big load of, uh, hey, I want a pod agent, please, but let's say three or 400 at the time, the system start to panic and have really weird behavior. I would also say that using multiple Kubernetes cloud to spread our loads between all of these looks like an edge case for the Kubernetes plugin. So combination of both made it not working as expected. We had help from Jesse Glick. Many thanks, Jesse, who pointed out that maybe we could try to also add Kubernetes resource quota, which Stefan did. He applied quotas. So Quotas are per namespace. They can be done per, uh, with CPU, memory, hard, soft. But in that case, we use the more recent one, which is the max number of pod running on a given on a given namespace, which absolutely map to what we tell Jenkins. So by enforcing the limit on both sides, that work as expected now. What happened is that Jenkins, if sometimes try to schedule more pods than it should, but Kubernetes refused the pod creation, so Jenkins then fall back to another Kubernetes cloud, which is what we want. Otherwise, it went it wait on the queue. So the problem was fixed, and it looked really good. Uh, that was also a good thing. Thanks, thanks, survey, thanks, James Nord, and thanks, Stefan, for pushing over on the data dog subject, because now we are able to produce really nice uh, graph such as this one where you can see the, the dark light is digital ocean and the light blue is the AWS. So you see that um, it decreases following the operation by Stefan. Stefan added the quota and we triggered a bunch of builds. And as you can see, we have an, around 120 pods at the same time for AWS and around 30 for our friends digital ocean. Um, just to show you what happened before, as you can see, the blue one here was a digital ocean last week when the problem appeared. And now as you can see the red is 
AWS now that we have fixed the issue with resource quota. So that's a good news. We don't have to think about a more complex solution. <laughs> I'm happier with the outcome. So thanks everyone involved in that one. That was quite tricky. Any question on this one? So the, the, the quota level that you set, just to be sure I've understood, the mm -hmm. quota level you set is all the way out at the cluster level, at the Kubernetes cluster, you say, look, don't allocate more than this. And, and then if, if Jenkins asks for more than that, the cluster correctly, the cluster APIs correctly say, no, I refuse. Exactly. Okay, and, and the Kubernetes plugin deals with that and says, oh, my request has been refused. Okay. So I'm going to search for another candidate to schedule options, which is another Kubernetes cloud that might have some capacity left. And once you reach the maximum of all the available clouds, then it waits. It has a wait and retry. Okay. Um, we still have an issue to open still on the Kubernetes plugin mentioning that it doesn't work as expected <laughs> because it's a bug, literally. Yeah, and, and, and we can now uh, um, remove the limit we had before. I think we, we left it, no? The Jenkins one with the plugin. Jesse mm. and I uh, are in sync on the fact that we should keep both. Oh, Just, so we, yep. Oh, we need uh, to make sure to, to change both of them at the same time, so. Yep, maybe an okay. update CLI process could um, execute sure a script, retrieve the values required on all the repository and determine the new value and update, propose update on it. Okay. That's a good point. Uh, can I ask you, Stefan, to open the Eldesk issue, mentioning that yes. uh, new Maven, just to so that we think and we don't forget about that, please? Yes. We had the uh, in plugin installation request by Jesse to unblock a new feature on the BOM uh, that involved uh, a plugin that hasn't been updated since one year. Uh, yeah, Jesse know, knows what, I'm not really sure, let's see. Um, that it's has been installed. New on the environment variable, variable, I'm not sure it's a big risk and a big uh, problem if it hasn't been updated since one year, I don't know. Yeah, um, it's it's certainly not as, as not as general purpose as some other plugins that have previously been installed on, on ci.jenkins.io. Yeah. I mean, pipeline utilities steps, for instance, should hmm. not have well, any problem. Not to mention any specific plugins that are a little too general purpose, huh? <laughs> so uh, I just realized that, um, let me reopen. We forgot to update the um, because we list. forgot to add the plugin to the list in Puppet Yera Data for CI Jenkins IO. We have a list of plugins that we recently treated and cleaned up. And, and we try to add a comment on each plugin to say, hey, that plugin is used because of that. That should help future uh, selves. Um, can't log in on Artifactory. It was a problem between chair and keyboard. <laughs> and key clock performance horrific uh, when looking up modifying users. So Stefan, can you explain what we did to fix the issue around key clock? That was not too hard. We just migrate the, the database from uh, uh, Amazon to Azure, if I remember correctly. And suddenly the latency goes down. Yeah. Magic. Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Stefan. Uh, so the new database is uh, Terraform code manage, so we can track it. Uh, it's uh, inside uh, Azure, so nice work. Uh, we can start again thinking about replacing account Jenkins.io by key clock. Now a key clock is use usable. Uh, that means uh, trying to find what are what were the missing steps 
What just were the missing your words? Username. I, I just say we have to find what were the real issues, fix them, and then dug a tomb for accounts check in Sayo. Even if it's running with GDK 17 now, <laughs> still. Um, now the open issue. First, we have a lot of people with issues where the password. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We have the sign up issue on the account app since uh, at least one or two weeks. It's not uh, uh, explaining mm -hmm. these new issues, but uh, it's part of them. Yeah, it's one. But it feels like, uh, I, I don't know, it, was there a change inside Jenkins itself uh, in the help on the login page that could have pointed users when they are running on their own Jenkins instance, they forgot the username, and instead of going to their own help desk inside a company, that could lead them to our help desk. I Mark, don't know. You seem we muted. don't hear you uh, mute. You're muted, Mark. I'm not aware of any such change, but I'm going to do a quick search of the source code to see. Yep. Uh, there isn't. There is only one command with an help desk link into it. Yeah, and into it's Jenkins it's, source code. It's in the Jenkins file, so no, it's it's not coming from Jenkins core. I don't know. I, it's a good good question. Where did what motivated those users of a Jenkins controller to think that that the Jenkins infra help desk could help them? But most of the users of these users doesn't even answer to our request to okay, so, you have lost your password. What is your account? Worse, I see at least one. The guy say, I don't know what is my username and neither my password. You need to recover it. <laughs> Okay. The answer is we, but the, the correct answer back is we've recovered it, but we can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> because that would be a security breach. Therefore, we, we don't want to breach the security. It's been recovered. Thank you for asking. So that's why we still have that issue that should be taken on next iteration. Uh, add an LDS template for a country recovery yeah. issue. Uh, that should might tell. Requests. Uh, you've opened the report request and uh, it's just a draft for now, but uh, yeah, uh, I, have a, I have asked some review. I have included you, uh, Mark, at in if you can take a look also, I, okay. I like that. Cool. Thanks, Harvey. So that means up. I will try to add this one. So uh, that might not solve. So, we have this one that should help, and as Hervé said, uh, there are errors on accounts Jenkins IO when people are creating. Their accounts are created. So maybe we could update the LDS template saying, okay, if you saw uh, HTTP 5.0.0, then try to recover your passwords with the email you used. At least that should give them a bit more autonomy on that area, but we have to fix the 5.0 issue. Um, so I'll, if it's okay, it's assigned to me. I will take care of the 500 issue unless someone want to code the uh, account Jenkins IO. You are welcome to do that if you want to try. Okay, so we'll take care of this one. Um, Stefan, one quick one. We have the migrate key cloak database to yeah. Azure. That's waiting uh, for the installation yep. of the old uh database that was it's it that's why it's still open i was waiting for a full week of usage which we will reach tomorrow so that should be okay for you tomorrow is that correct yes, exactly cool um next one private gates rv can you give us a status about that new cluster that you are working on um I have some issue with the uh, network part and the uh, identity part of this cluster. So you already created the cluster. It's code managed almost. 
but you yeah. have issue to um, reach it, right? Yeah. Uh, disabling the IP uh, range, uh, uh, the authorized uh, IP range uh, uh, on the cluster, I can access it and deploy uh, chart on it, but uh, it shouldn't be that way. It should be IP restricted, so I have to unlock this issue. Okay. Um, so I assume you might want to pair, or do you want to continue on yes. your own? No, I'd like to pair if you don't mind. Okay. While we're on that area, we saw an issue. Uh, let me. A A A. No. So there's been an issue open last week by a gentleman. Add AAA records, which is a DNS record for IPv6 uh, yeah. address. Um, so since the I first, sep sorry, you continue, continue. Since, since the first September, uh, India is IPv6 v6 by default, all all of India. Um, the internet provider in on India. So that has been a federal government uh, plan since months, years, as I assume. Uh, they plan to remove IPv4 absolutely from any of their gateways uh, in 2025. Uh, the gentleman who opened that issue points uh, that it can be troublesome in some case from India to reach our mirrors. And as a more general fact, uh, it doesn't seem that our Kubernetes cluster prod publicates which hosts the mirror at least the entry point for the mirrors, but also some elements such as plugin Jenkins.io or Jenkins.io uh, backends and some accounts Jenkins.io as well and other public services. It's not IPv6 compliant. So it's not only adding a record for DNS. We might we need also to implement at least an external load balancer that expose a public IPv6 and then act as a gateway. It looks like that that change is not that easy. Uh, based on the first documentation I could find on Azure, we need to create full dual stack virtual yeah. network uh -huh. and then enable dual stack on Kubernetes level on these uh, networks. Yeah. Then you don't have to use IPv6 internally, but you need that in order to have uh, dual stack load balancers publicly. I've I stumbled upon this dual stack uh, uh, stuff uh, when uh, studying uh, AKS with uh, Terraform, and uh, uh, there is a preview function in Azure allowing us to use dual stack on container on Kubernetes. Uh, 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 what? Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, pre uh, feature preview. Uh, but uh, but um, of what? Of the dual stack for the container on Kubernetes. And okay. I will give you a link. Okay. Um, but it's a, but what yeah, problem it's would a, it solve for us? It's a feature preview that would let us run dual stack. Yes. Okay. I think there is a misunderstanding. We don't care at all using IPv6 on private networks, as far as yes, I can tell. But we have a, a lot of for services, public, uh, for public services on. A, Azure cluster. So yes, I still uh, don't knowing, understand. Knowing how to activate the dual stack on our cluster can be useful. I don't know. No. Okay, so let, let, let me let me repeat. Virtual networks, dual dual stack new virtual network uh, are uh, feature complete since two years in Azure, but we missed that with Olivier. AKS dual stack by default is working and is not a feature preview. What is a feature preview is using IPv6 internally to the cluster when you want pods to discuss with the CNI uh, net, uh, network. That's why I've put a, a limit is that, okay, if it's a feature preview, then we try not using them, uh, but we require at least to create a new network from scratch who cannot convert existing network, then convert, create a new, uh, also, a, uh, cluster from scratch dual stack. And that one allows you when it creates load balancers, you can associate IPv4, public IPv4 and public IPv6 to the load balancer, 
while keeping internally everything private in IPv4. Does it clarify what I, because I might not have been precise before. And so the feature preview is having the ability to do IPv6 end to end until the container itself. Which is only an internal detail for us. Eventually, Hervé, I saw a note about internal load balancers. We might check because it sounds like that we, if we don't use IPv6 everywhere, we might have issues with this one, hmm. which is what we use for private Nginx ingress. I've posted a link in our private chat and they are also speaking about the load balancer. Mm -hmm. We'll check that later. Okay, but yeah, so IPv6 is a subject uh, that might need some attention right now, not because we need to change everything in emergency, but because we're on the verge of creating a new private cluster, then we will create a new public cluster. We already have IPv4 issue on the current networks. So that means we, we might have to plan creating element from scratch. Yeah, that's the best time to do it because we're starting. Exactly. So no emergency to do it, but if we have to do it, better to do it now to avoid breaking everything in six months. Which means maybe, Hervé, we might have to rethink some part of the topology of the cluster you are creating. We might need yeah. to recreate the private yeah. networks. I, yeah. We'll discuss this later. Sorry? We'll discuss this after the meeting. Is there any question about that? No. Ah. I'm having issues with my copy and paste. Ah, finally. Uh, key clock is okay. Windows agent on CI Jenkins IO disconnect prematurely. Stefan, can you give uh, us a heads up on that one? Uh, if I remember correctly, that's the one using the label window, Windows only um as it's it's not uh specific enough we cannot make sure that uh, the node uh that are uh, disconnected uh which one are they because the label is used uh in, in multiple places so the aim right now is uh, to try to avoid using that label which is not specific enough and to find where it's used change it with a more specific one and then uh, clean that label. Am I right? Looks good. Does yeah. it make sense for everyone? And so about the issue you saw, Mark, um, looks like the Windows label was trying to allocate randomly different ACI uh, container. But the logs show that when the acceptance test was passing, there were other builds that already filled the maximum amount of Windows container that we were trying to have. The thing is that this stack, this stack looks to be the same issue as what we have with Kubernetes plugin. Jenkins was trying to create additional ACI while it should not, but the amount of build was just tearing apart the multi-thread things. Um, so that thing is quite annoying, especially that for sure will happen on other plugins. You check that it wasn't happening on a plugin a few minutes after, but the build wave was passed. So we cannot be sure that some users of CI Jenkins are aren't suffering from this one. Mm. So we, there are two roads here to ensure in long term that it doesn't happen again. Um, there is that plan to move ACI agent windows only to Kubernetes not pool. So we could apply the same solution as what we did with the resource quotas. Or we can also check right now if there is a way to add uh, quotas on Azure already. I haven't checked if we have, uh, there are, we have cloud level quota applied to the whole account, but maybe we could say, okay, uh, CI Jenkins IO with the user technical accounts, that technical account should be able to spawn an at, at maximum 20 pods or whatever, uh, we could check this one. So we like have to we, work on that one. Sorry, we, delegate, uh, we delegate the the quota limit numbers 
to the API of of the the company we use uh, in, instead of of Jenkins because of the multi-threading that is uh, leading to error when when it has to deal with that. Yeah, in complement, not instead. Yeah, better to More. have both. Still yeah, important both. that Jenkins knows limits because it can go back and clean it up. Uh, but we don't know if ACI provides such feature resource code. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, next one. CI Jenkins IO stories is not handling pull requests open by Gavin. Uh, that one we are working on unifying the pipeline from infra CI and CI Jenkins IO. So CI builds are public and you can have build logs and are run on CI Jenkins IO. And infra CI do this exactly the same step, but only on the master branch. On pull request, it generates the uh, preview sites because the mechanism responsible for deploying preview sites must not be on CI Jenkins IO because it requires a token to allow deployment to whatever Netlify environment. If that token is on CI Jenkins IO, it's virtually already act. So that's why we split that part. So infra CI should build and deploy on the master branch and build and deploy on preview environment for every pull request. CI Jenkins IO should build tests for any commit so that end user can have visibility on what they do. The challenge behind is how oh, should we how oh, can we use the same Jenkins file as much as, as as much as possible and we need to ensure the same agent, same template, same tooling on both controllers. So Stefan and I are pairing along the road on that one, uh, but it's not an easy one, so it takes some time. Any question on this one? Okay. Uh, what are the, le the one left? Rely repo Jenkins AI org mission. Um, Mark and I started experimentations. Uh, we haven't reached a level of confidence uh, good enough yet on that topic, on the way we should change the structuration of the repository on GFrog. And we were slowed down between the elections and today's advisory. So we'll uh, continue the upcoming week. Publish pipeline step doc generator and backend extension indexer. So that one was closed. Why is it reopened? I don't remember. Oh, okay. It. They want unifying pipeline like we did uh, for stories. Fair. Is there any new topic that we should be aware of? One, two, three. No? No. Is there any question? Okay. Uh, okay, I think I've taken notes. I will upload everything. Thanks a lot, uh, Hervé, for the notes again. That's really helpful. So let me stop the recording. So first screen sharing, no more. Then stop recording and see you next week.